So this is a technical experiment. If you have a computer, I insist you take it out now. If you don't have Node installed, I don't have time to wait for you. <laughs> Play with somebody else. If you don't have Node installed, you should install it. Um, another thing is, on your computer, you can follow along with the presentation if you go to buzzjs.surge.sh. It's on the screen. There. Part of that is because we are going to, this is going to be an interactive uh, talk. This is, um, I don't really do good intros to without actually walking through it myself, so we'll do that together, again, if you have a computer. Okay, so, um, oh, that slide I just said. So uh, while I'm doing the introduction, please install the Angular CLI. Uh, this is a talk about Angular, um, so we're going to use the Angular CLI, which is the Angular 2 uh, command line interface, <laughs> so you can install that by using npm, npm install dash g, the g is important. If you get a permission denied, oh, that installs it globally, and then angular dash cli. If you get a permission denied, uh, try typing sudo before, or install node. Okay, so uh, Amari, I live in San Francisco. It's um, half as busy and way more sunny than here. Uh, <laughs> I do these things. Uh, in the newsletter, if you if you use Angular One, I wrote ngbook. We have ngbook two coming out and full stack React, and I believe we're giving some of those away today. Okay. Um, those are that's our uh, full stack React site. You want the React book and the ng two book should have been somewhere there as well. If you are following along the presentation, those are links. You can just click on that link. Okay. Cool. So, uh, without further ado, do, uh, raise your hand if you have the CLI installed. Okay, great. Nobody. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, six people. Uh, are you installing it right now? Fantastic. It's that. It is going to take a little while, so I'm just going to continue. Uh, and that's actually why you have the presentation, so you can go back to the slides yourself. And I'm not going to take that down after the talk. Okay, so in order to use the CLI, we are going to create uh, create one. Say with uh, let me just go back one directory. Let's say ng new demo. Now this takes a little while because it uh, Angular will install a bunch of packages for us. Um, that's why I have one pre-created. So what you'll get is you'll get something that looks like this. Okay, so once you have that, once you have that installed, let's go ahead and start it using the CLI. The way that we'll start it is by using the ng serve or the ng server command. If they are aliases. And when that gets loaded. Hooray! We have a demo. It works. It was static because I confirmed it worked before we started. If you have trouble getting yours up, install Node. Uh, it's ng serve or ng server. Uh, the new command? Yeah. You can go to buzzjs.surge.sh and go back yourself also. Okay. All right, so while uh, Everyone is installing Angular CL the Angular CLI. Uh, let's walk through exactly how that works. Woo, that's big. OK, so uh, there, there's a couple files that it will generate that are important to know about. Actually, I am going to put it over here. Um, that one, this file right here, is the index.html file right there. And I cut out some stuff so it would fit on the screen. There we go. Um, we, we don't really have to worry about that. It's just one to know about. Um, 
The one, the one thing that we do need to know about in that file is it has a selector, and that's uh, specific to Angular 2. And that selector uh, in the slides is called app. The selector in our app is the name prefixed or postfixed by app right there. Whoops. OK. Uh, the other file that we need to know about that, we're going, that it generated for us that we'll know we are going to interact with is uh, the main.ts file. That's the main file, it's the entry file if you're familiar with Webpack uh, for where our application starts. Um, the uh, important thing inside of this file is the bootstrap function. That's how Angular starts. And one thing that's important to know about the bootstrap function is if you're using this with another framework, if you're using it with Angular 1, or you're using it with React, or you're using React with Angular 2, or vice versa, uh, the Angular 2 will only control the component that you bootstrap it on. And in, that case, in this case, uh, this is uh, what we're telling Angular 2, is that we want to bootstrap only on that component and not on any of the rest of the page. Okay. Um, the uh, file that that main function uh, imports is this guy right here. And that, uh, that's in the source app index.ts file. Um, this is where we're going to spend most of our time here and downwards in the file system. So uh, that file is called uh, demo.component.ts right there. And the index, the index file just imports that exported component. Uh, I forgot to ask, who, uh, raise your hand if you have experience with Angular 2. Okay, raise your hand if you have experience with TypeScript. TypeScript. Okay, raise your hand if you have experience with ES6. Okay. So the import statement, uh, how many, uh, raise your hand if you have uh, experience with Node. Is that everybody? Almost everybody? Okay, so you know how Node you have require? Uh, import is the ES6 and TypeScript version of require. You can still call require if you want to call require. Um, the cool kids are using import. <laughs> so when you see an import statement, uh, basically what we're doing is we're saying, hey, from that package, give me this thing if there's brackets around it. If you import everything, uh, you can do that without with taking those brackets off. So if we wanted to say, let's go import Angular, we could do that. And that would just get everything. And then you call it angular.component. OK, and the demo component that is created for us is this guy right here. This is, um, it's an exported class. Uh, if you're not familiar with ES6 or TypeScript, classes are uh, the, just the object's constructor. It creates a prototype under the hood for us. So if you raise your hand if you're familiar with uh, object.prototype, the prototype object on JavaScript. OK. Uh, if you want to create a class in uh, JavaScript, so new class. You create a constructor and then put functions on that by using prototype. Oops. Uh, go. And then you can call a new class and call some class and call go on that, just like it's an instance object. Uh, these things, these are two, they're similar to each other, similar enough. OK. And then the last place that we're going to interact with uh, in today's talk is the demo component.html, which is the template um, generated by Angular, the Angular CLI. All right, at this point, raise your hands. Who, uh, raise your hand if you have the Angular CLI installed. OK. If you didn't raise your hand, look over to your partner and um, try to steal their keyboard. OK, cool. So uh, one of the really awesome things about this is, unlike an experience of any other framework that I know of, is that you just use the CLI and 
you type one command, you type two commands, new to generate it, and then ng serve, and they've baked a lot of the build chain inside of that. That's one of the um, one of the arguments for uh, the question that didn't get deployed, which is, should I use Angular or should I use React? Angular two or React, um, or Angular one for that matter. Uh, I'm not going to be able to answer that question. It's your team that has to answer that question, but I'm going to give you the simplest intro I can to Angular 2 so it doesn't sound so scary. It's also totally different from Angular 1, as you may or may not have noticed. One of the reasons is, is because Angular 2 is component-based, which is, I think, where the world is going. Um, so uh, if, you end up using, <coughs> if you end up using React, you'll be doing components as well. Uh, so let's talk about components. Let's talk about components in Angular 2. So components allow us, what they do is they allow us to take our app and um, divide it up into a functionality chunks. Um, you probably already do this in your app, in your development today. You, uh, if, you, if you take a page and you say, I want to make a sidebar, and I want to make a main bar, and I want to make a nav bar, that's those, you can functionally think those as components. And then we put components inside those components. They're composable. Uh, and each component ideally operates only on the functionality that it needs and doesn't need to um, operate any other functionality from anywhere else. So let's go ahead and start building our own component. The way that we'll do that is we'll create a completely new uh, file um, I've already created here called uh, the counter component.ts. Um, So I, I like to create my components in their own individual directory, like I do there. So uh, feel free to make a directory. You also don't have to do that. You can just put it in the top level source or app source, source app directory. OK. So the first thing that we need to do in order to build a component is what? Import, yeah. Uh, what am I importing? What am I requiring? I guess the answer is on the screen. I could have just looked there. OK. So uh, with the component thing imported, uh, we are going to use it. That thing is called a decorator. So that uh, if you're familiar with, the, with ES6, there is a concept that was baked in early on to uh, decorators. It's moved to ES7. and um, now it's up for debate, so you have to, if you're going to use it outside of TypeScript, uh, you'll need to use it uh, importing the legacy package from MPN if you want to use it on, yeah, in just JavaScript. Um, TypeScript includes it by default. Thank you, Microsoft. They're listening, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so what is a decorator? Uh, can anyone answer that question? Anybody want to try? Yeah, it's just like in math class that you have, um, look at that in a second, it's just like in math class when you have like uh, GHJ, like that. Um, all it is, all a decorator is, is that. And in JavaScript that looks something like this, right? Like if you wanted to add a bold decorator around something, the way that you would do that is you would call the decorator function and return back the original function getting called with whatever that uh, additional function. Whatever you want to decorate, um, that original function gets passed back. And you can do this on classes too. What? Oh, OK. I am hearing things. Cool. So decorators, decorators themselves are not really that, they're not super scary. Um, I'm not very good at dec decorating, so uh, just my apartment and stuff, it's pretty fair. OK, so in order to use the um, component decorator, we need to put, we need to decorate something. So the thing that we're going to decorate uh, is a class. Um, the way that you call a decorator is use the at in TypeScript. You use the at uh, sign before it, and you just call the decorator just like that. The decorator itself is a function, and that function accepts a description object. And that description object is what we're going to deal with inside of Angular 2. And as I said, we need to component. We need to decorate something, and that's something we're going to call a counter component. Uh, 
Uh, also, we are going to take, this is how the require function works um, and the import function. We're going to take that this uh, counter component, we're going to use it in another file. So in order to use it in another file, we have to, we have to export it. That's why I put that there. OK, so the goal is for us to be able to go into a, the apparent component, like the uh, demo component, and place that counter counter inside, inside that component. And we want to, uh, this is uh, making the counter component a child of that parent component, the demo component. So there's a couple things that we need to do um, that are required for components to actually work. We need to do, we need to add a selector to our component, we need to add a template. The selector is what describes uh, what, um, what component we want Angular to replace. So, uh, oh, I thought I had it, I don't. So the selector in our case, selector will be counter. And the reason why I call it counter is because it's a counter. Um, and this needs to match this guy right here. Those two things have to be the same string. Otherwise, Angular would be like, I don't know about that thing. And the second thing that we need to do is add a template. All right, cool. So now we've placed, uh, we can also use uh, template URL, which is how demo component works, and it imports the other, another HTML file. Um, let's go to our uh, HTML and see if it works. Hmm, it's not showing up. I wonder why. I might have the answer on the next slide. There. Yeah. It's not the answer. <laughs> Just another way of asking that same question. Why is it not showing up? Huh? <laughs> okay, so uh, in Angular 2, uh, just because we place the component on the screen, Angular 2 doesn't actually know that we want to use that component. Um, in Angular 1, you could just name something, put it on the package, and it would pull that thing in. Um, oftentimes, that'd be a directive. In uh, Angular 2, they don't do that. We need to be explicit about it. And so the way, that we, the way that we are specific about it inside of Angular 2 is by, like I said before, importing it. So let's go to our demo component, and let's go import our new components. Counter components. And then uh, we need to tell our demo component that we want to use this as a directive. And like I said, I think my autocomplete turned off. I don't know how that happened. Um, we we define our components by use by setting those these options up inside that component decorator. So um, that's how you interact with the counter component, or that's how you tell the counter the demo component that we want to use the counter component in our in our view. So I didn't need to refresh. Um, but now it's working. Hooray. OK. So that's not really interesting, right? We just, you could just use JavaScript directly and just replace an element to do that. But um, let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's add uh, an input to that counter component. So rather than just saying, hey, we want this counter um, to show some text, let's have, let's uh, be able to configure our counter so it can show well, it can show uh, custom text, a custom count, if you will. So our goal is so, so that inside of our uh, counter, the usage of our counter component component will be <coughs> initial count. There we go. Let's make that a string. Uh, so our goal is to be able to do this so that we can place multiple counters on the screen and each one show a different count. In order to do this, we need to uh, tell our counter component that it, it is going to accept an input. Uh, an input 
is yeah, an input uh, is exactly what it sounds. It sounds like something is going into the component. So we need the component to know that it's going to accept something. And that something, in our case, is called the initial count. So in order to, to tell the demo component that we want to input something, as well, we'll do the same thing that we do with the demo component. We'll do a similar thing. Uh, we'll, we will uh, define the component that we are decorating. We'll add uh, the input key to the decorator configuration object. And we'll call that the initial count. So now our counter component knows that it's going to accept something called initial count. You'll, you'll see in Angular that uh, anytime you see those square brackets, that means something is going into the component. You're passing the component to something. OK. So uh, this is skipping ahead. Uh, cool. So now we have the component getting passed in. We need to, uh, we, it's probably likely that we want to show this component, right? So let's go ahead and put uh, that component in the template. The way that we can do, we can do that is use the like, similar syntax that JSX uses, and that's the double squiggly brackets. And we'll just paste, we'll just paste oops, this initial count. And we'll just uh, place that number inside of that component, or inside that component template. And if we go back to the page, it's refreshed automatically. And we can see that it's ugly, but the numbers are there. So if we want to hold on to this, if we want to hold on to this value, right now, this value uh, inside TypeScript looks like this. Um, Angular is adding that automatically for us because we've described it as an input. There's also other ways you might see uh, in documentation, you might see this. Um, that's the same thing as this. Okay. Awesome. So it's really, uh, the initial count is really useful when you're in a parent component context. It's not really that, it doesn't describe what we're actually doing if we want to update and modify our counter, right? Like if initial count only makes sense for the initial time that it renders, and it doesn't make sense past that. Uh, so uh, the initial count, as I just said, is descriptive for the parent, and count is more descriptive, I would argue, for the child. So the way that you can, um, you can describe to Angular that you want to receive a different variable name for the variable name that you're getting. And the way that you do that is by using uh, the uh, object syntax without the squiggly brackets inside that input. It just looks like that. So now, rather than initial count, we'll just have count. If we go back to the page, it's refreshed automatically, and it's still working. Hooray. All right. So now let's go lightning speed ahead and talk about outputs. So if we want to, uh, or sorry, interaction and outputs. So uh, let's go ahead and, and add some clicks to this counter. Right? It doesn't, right now it's just a static web page with config, static configuration. So let's, let's change that. Unlike when we're taking inputs, from our components, uh, right here. When we're taking inputs, um, I'm actually not sure how that worked with the, without the squiggly brackets. Did it actually refresh? OK. Oh, wait. I totally skipped a step. Uh, my bad. So this is passing in a string, just like this. If we want to add. If we want to add uh, like a custom variable to it, uh, in this case, we can take the uh, demo component and we can uh, add a count. Say, we'll say it's a number, and let's go ahead and say that's 100. So now, that was what that jumping ahead slide was. Now if we look here, let's take these other counters out too. Without those squiggly brackets, uh, we, that wouldn't get resolved. That would just be uh, whatever the string that we pass in, <coughs> or without the square brackets. So if we do that, it'll just say count. And let's go ahead and put that in an H1. So bigger. Bigger is always better, right? OK. 
So now if we put this back in squiggly brackets, now it'll show up as 100. Awesome. So now getting back to output. So outputs, the way that you can kind of think of outputs is that there is an action that happens, and that action gets fired from the component. And we have the opportunity to interact with the component based upon that action. The way that we tell Angular 2 that we want to take an action from an event uh, is we just we call a function on that event, or we call a function in that that component, as long as we describe it with the um, with the parentheses around the event that we want to handle. So, uh, what we want to do is we want to add an event to this counter object so that when we click it, that number increases. So the first thing that we'll do uh, in order to make that happen is uh, in our uh, uh, in our um, uh, template, let's go ahead and add that uh, uh, interaction hack, interaction handler counts. And this is where we're the interaction we want, as I just said, the interaction that we want to handle is the uh, click event. So we need to, if we want to handle that, rather than being passed as an attribute, we pass it, like I said with the parentheses around it. And now we need to define the add count function that we are calling, or that we want Angular to call. And because we're storing, um, because we're storing the number, uh, we can get, because we're storing the number based on the input, whoop, plus one, uh, based on the input here as count, uh, that becomes a publicly exported variable, I guess, um, right there, or privately exported variable unless we define it as public. Um, so we can just interact with it as though it's an instance variable on that object already for us. And now if we click it, it works. Boy, that, that happened fast. Okay. Uh, all right. So, I'm just going to speed ahead. I'm just going to keep going and not ask for questions. I'll do that at the end. OK, so um, it's more exciting if we have multiple counters, right? Um, rather than just having a single counter on the page, hooray, we can, this is a number, yo, um, as 100. Uh, what, if we have, what if we have external data? You can think about these counters as like if you have like a news item from Reuters. They're based out here, right? Our New York Times is in, based in New York. That's weird. Um, that was a joke. They're, they're in New York. Okay. Uh, San Francisco Times, if I was in San Francisco. But I don't think we have a Times. We have the Journal and the Chronicle. Anyway, um, we can change. Let's go ahead and change this number from a uh, single number to let's make it an array. And let's uh, instantiate this array. With one, two, and three. Okay, so as of now, now it's not going to work. Be, um, our page isn't going to work because now we're, we've changed the variable name. We're not passing a new var a variable name in. We're passing um, multiple counters. So just like in Angular one, we have a way to iterate over elements and make copies of them, and clones of them on the page. The way that we can do that is by using the funky uh, star syntax. Um, Prepended or prepending the directive that we want to call. The directive that we want to call is the ng4 directive. So let's go ahead and we, let's just call that right on the component itself. And we have to use the um, we have to use the syntax uh, let something of something else, and that uh, the other something is defined. And what that does is it's just like a for loop where you have the, or a for each loop, if you use the for each loop. Um, and it's going to say, for every single one of these, define that thing, that object that exists in memory space in the runtime application as count for every single iteration, in this case, count. So um, that's cool, it just automatically works. Okay. OK, so this is kind of ugly, right? I would argue this is really ugly. I wouldn't show my mom this, um, unless I was giving her this talk. Um, so let's go ahead. 
Oh boy, that got exciting fast. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about styling. Um, there's three types of styling inside in Angular 2. Uh, you could argue there's four, but I'm just gonna talk about three. Uh, one of those is global style sheets, which is what we're already familiar with, which is why we all hate CSS. Unless you don't, you're not human probably, um, or you're a designer. <laughs> I'm also not human and I'm not a designer. So let's talk about global style sheets. Those are pretty easy. Uh, global style sheets are um, just like we link. Uh, we link import those. Um, we're, I like to use semantic UI. If you haven't heard of semantic UI, it's pretty awesome. It's, it's like akin to Bootstrap. So you could use Bootstrap if you wanted to do that. Um, the one thing that we'll have to do, bless you, the one thing that we'll have to do in order to tell Angular that we want to use a package, this is why I want to talk about this, we need to tell Angular that we want it to use a package from NPM. One of the reasons why we need to do this is so that Angular can take care of optimizing our page size and only import the things that it needs. It also, coming in the future, I think, when they, um, when they announce Angular 2 is, for, is out of beta, uh, it will automatically optimize that, the page for you and cut out functions that you don't use. It's pretty cool. So in order to do that, we need to interact, we need to add something to the build configuration. The build configuration in our CLI is kept in the top, in the root level file angular-cli-build.js. So I know you're saying like, well, why isn't it .ts? They're too cool for that. Um, so we're going to uh, semantic UI CSS. We're going to uh, just import everything from semantic UI to save time. If you uh, don't want to import everything, you can do that with semantic.js CSS. Just like that. But we'll just import everything because there's no time. That's going to import everything that doesn't optimize it. When you change the Angular, when you change the Angular build CLI uh, configuration, you need to restart your server. That's the only time you need to restart it. <coughs> okay. So now we can just, like I said, uh, just import that directly uh, into our into our uh, page, just like we were just adding Bootstrap. And theoretically, that would work. Did it not work? What happened there? Oh, uh, that was the same thing as the last one. The syntax got. Did I import that right? Yeah, it should be there. Uh, let's just do C JS and CSS. Okay. Uh, let's talk about component styling so we don't get bogged down on this. Um, component styling, uh, what we can do is we can describe our CSS inside of the component description. Um, so uh, the way that we add style to the component description is exactly like you would expect it to, expect us to. Uh, oh, I totally forgot I wanted to do that too. Um, the semantic UI, this is, the semantic UI um, adds a bunch of classes. So if you want to use that global style sheet, you use it just like that, which is why it didn't actually update. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that for the main component too. And then we can do that, the same thing inside. We can add that class inside the component uh, template in our custom component. Oh boy, my battery's almost dead too. Ugh. Okay, so it's still kind of ugly. Uh, we can also do inline styling. Um, you can use uh, familiar directives like ng style, and that takes the input form because we're passing something in. So that input form looks like this, as we are talking about. Um, you pass that an object in a string, if you want to add um, inline styling to that object. And another thing that we can do is we can add class, uh, we can add um, uh, ng classes on it. Uh, we're not going to have time to do that, and my battery's probably going to shut off. 
my paper soon. Anyway, uh, moving already. Okay, um, we had RxJS coming up and moving things to services uh, in a different order than that. Um, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> this talk will always be online uh, for my future generations to make fun of me for. Yeah. Two questions. Uh, first one, is NG4 case sensitive? The capital F, yes. Uh, not if you're the Angular team and you work at Google, who basically just operates the internet. Okay. <laughs> That's, it's, it also, um, it comes uh, from Angular 1 when you, do, when you define directives using the Pascal case. Okay. Um, the second question is, does, do decorators add any, uh, I guess, polyfills or So I can't tell you, so the question was, um, uh, is the F, is the, K, is the F in NG4 case sensitive? The answer is yes, to repeat the first question. The second question is, um, when you're using a decorator polyfill, or when you're using a decorator, do you need a polyfill? For TypeScript, no, because TypeScript requires you to have a compiler, and that compiles the decorators for us. If you're using an ES6, or, or uh, and you're taking, you're using Babel to, Compile it. Um, I don't know the size, but it definitely adds. It definitely adds to it. It might be minuscule. Of course, my AWS S3 bill this month was enormous, so maybe it's adding a lot more than I expect. <laughs> maybe it takes 199 megabytes or gigabytes. Yeah. How much benefit you get when you move from Angular 1.5 to 2 in terms of efficiency? Did you say Ember? No, Angular 1.5 to Angular 2. How much benefit? Yeah, in terms of efficiency. So how much benefit do I get from, would you get from moving from an Angular 1 application to an Angular 2 application? Yeah. Well, I think components are really important. Um, Angular 1 kind of one of, uh, what? 1.5 to, right? Uh, components that yes. are separators are both there in 1.5. Yeah, so they added, so for those of you who don't know, they added the com uh, component syntax to uh, Angular 1 in Angular 1.5. Um, I think components are really important, and I think components, building components in Angular 2 um, is a cleaner syntax. It, I think it's um, also mentally less, it's mentally less exhausting to create a component in Angular 2, which I think is really important. Another thing about uh, Angular, uh, Angular 2, um, I'm sorry, Angular 1 is, uh, if you're using Angular 1, everything on the page is Angular 1 as opposed to and Angular 2 is not. Another really nice thing about using Angular 2 is that you can use it seamlessly with other frameworks. I did a talk um, three weeks ago about using React and Angular together. What are the benefits? It's also, um, Super fast. Yeah. And, oh, oh, sorry. I just want to add one. I want to decorate that answer real quick. Um, <laughs> uh, um, uh, I know. I forgot what I was going to say. I was laughing at my own decorator joke. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Um, we can go all the way back, or I'll just pull up the page, two pages, stack react and ng book two. Okay. Those are our two pages. I use dolphins everywhere. And oh, and um, my, uh, if you want to get in contact with me, my Twitter handle and my GitHub handle are a user. So likely, if you see that, that's me. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. So you're the author, is that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Now there's Thank you. <laughs> what? What is the title of the 
uh, NG book. Repeat the question. Oh, I'm sorry. So what? For real. Yes. The question is, is what's the name of the NG book? It's NG book. <laughs> Uh, and full stack React is the name of the React one. Yes, yeah. One thing I noticed uh, when you were doing this, um, I'm kind of confused by it. So is, is Angular 2 isomorphic by default, like this demo app? Uh, is it isomorphic? As in, does it render the, does it pre-render your HTML? Well, part of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, does it server-side render? Uh, you can get it to server-side render, yes. Okay. Um, it is not by default. But it's pretty easy to do. OK, cool. Um, yeah? Uh, this is the um, Angular 2 less of a footprint than the first one? Yes. And Angular, the, if you use the CLI, it optimizes even further. So it's quicker, it's faster. It's more fun. Okay. Um, I'll be around if you want to party. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, uh, by the way, BuzzJS, for the uh, opportunity to come and speak here. Yeah, thank you, Ari. I really appreciate it.